Hello, YouTube Liverpool fan in Japan. The Miyazaki Man Sai. There's lots of transfer rumors swirling around as we approach the end of this transfer window. Liverpool look like they're finally getting in on the action. Georgie Mamashtavili. He looks like he's the first one in the bag and it turns out it's going to be a fantastic deal because what, £29 million pounds, you say? They wanted in excess of €45 million, Euros, even €50 million Euros. and how have we bargained them down to that astonishing price? It looks as though we're going to loan him back to Valencia so they're going to have the number one shot stopper, in fact their best player back for another season. That might be worth the €10 million Euro differential in itself. Unfortunately for Brentford, they're going to look for other targets it looks like. However, Mashtavili only has an upside, it's only positives because first of all, this is a player who absolutely stood out at the Euros, right? Georgia against Spain, he kept them in it. He was absolutely fantastic, strong wrists, strong shot stopping, commanding his area. His physicality is top notch, he almost looks like Alison Becker as well. But the main reason why it's a win-win situation is the fact that at that price point, you're never ever going to make anything except a profit. Even if he has a calamitous season, the youth, the potential and the attributes. And that's the thing, form is only temporary and class is permanent as they say. He has a high ceiling and a lot of room to grow into that world class keeper to replace Alison Becker in the future. But will it replace Alison Becker? That is a question on a lot of people's mindsets. They're thinking that Alisson must have told FSG, must have told Richard Hughes, must have told Arneslot, I'll give you one season. Let's see how we perform. He might want to go back to his native Brazil. He might want a different challenge. He's won it all. He's been the number one in the Liverpool squad for a long, long time now. Absolutely treasured memories of Alisson Becker. What a gorgeous, gorgeous man. I cannot believe we came that close to sealing Nabil Fekir only for his brother-in-law, I think to scupper the deal and is all covered up with that hogus bogus knee injury to save everyone's face. But there was a revelation from Axelberg that if we signed the bill for Kier, we wouldn't have had the funds for Alison Beckham. And my goodness, destiny would have been different. Not to say we would have been worse off because you don't know the butterfly effect and the bill for Kier could have scored like a hat trick against Man City or something. Who knows? It's all conjecture. We got Alison Becker. The rest is history. It's written in the stars. We've won the Premier League with him. We've won the Champions League with him. We've won it all of him. I love our big Brazilian at number one. But I digress ever so slightly. Another reason why Jordi Mamashtavili is an absolutely top-notch signing is you look at the clubs who were linked with him, right? AC Milan, Manchester United, even Manchester City when Edison looked like he might be going to Saudi Arabia as well. Big, prominent clubs. None of the minnows, none of the lower leagues, none of the chances in the bottom ranks of the leagues these are top top clubs with world standing absolutely at the pinnacle of football and they were linked to the big stopper so you will always have a place at a club as the number one so in terms of price point you're pretty much guaranteed a profit if he doesn't turn out amazing the other hand is what about Kweeb Kelleher? Kweeb Kelleher has never let Liverpool down in fact he's probably the best number two in the league probably surpassing Ramsdale because before there was a conundrum at Arsenal where they had two number ones right Ramsdale and Raya two equivalent number ones. It's almost like Kudicini and Peter Cech, right? That was a fantastic pairing as well. I wouldn't quite say and you just heard the doorbell, right? Absolutely monumental breaking news. More important than any transfer news could possibly be. The meat guy sausages have arrived. My goodness, your cotton. In Japan, we have these weird ass popping sausages. It's like globules of fat in a frankfurter. You look at premium pork sausages, it's like some kind of giant frankfurter. It's probably what they do in America. It's probably equivalent of the frankfurters back in the UK, but I need me some British meaty sausage. And that looks totally wrong, but look, look what I mean. I haven't actually tried them before, but I've heard good things about these guys. The meat guy sausage, it was not cheap. I bought the last assorted pack, 6,000 yen. That's like, what, 35 quid, 35 quid for sausages. Insanity, we've got meat guy raw sausage, spicy. I think it's a pack of five. Beer flavored sausage. The raw sausage Irish version, the herbal sausage. Why am I talking about sausage? Well, we're trying to sign a variety of different sausages to the club, right? So uh, yeah, what well, fits. And I bought obviously a rack of ribs. I <sighs> Got the barbecue sauce as well. Digress just a little bit, but looky looky. Okay, yeah, so dual wheeling sausages. No, I meant dual number ones. Remember, we had Dudek and Kirkland signed simultaneously. That was a terrible idea because they'd be competing with each other and there'd be a clear number one. Never going to work. However, Kelleher never 
did anything wrong by Liverpool in this stint, helped us remain competitive. He's a great shot stopper, great with his feet. He might even be better than Alisson Beck on his feet. He's a well-deserved number two, and he'll be competing with Mamash Dashvili for that number one spot. However, it looks as though Kelleher won't be waiting that long. He wants to join in the action almost immediately compete for his island spot with Bazuna right at Southampton so I don't think he will renew his contract there's news today that he won't renew his contract up until 2026 that gives you a little bit of leeway a final season but it's a 25 million pound transfer fee Richard Hughes has proved he's very very prominent leading from where Michael Edwards left off in regards to getting the fees in Fabio Carvalho for 25 million wow Bobby Clark for 10 million with a sell-on percentage clause? My goodness. Sepp Vandenberg, we were holding him hostage, right? For the Bundesliga. And now, Bayer Leverkusen are in for him and willing to pay £25 million. It worked out for everybody. You hold on to the valuation for these players because these players are in demand. There's a reason why other agents and other clubs have been sniffing around these players. It's because of their quality. and They've got a high ceiling. They've got something to add in terms of the playing calibre and to their squad as well. So why release your asset for cheaper? It's like selling your car. You just wouldn't do it for cut price unless you're a bit local, local. <laughs> so yes, if you do keep Keller around, it's a 25 million pound gamble that he could compete with Mamash Davili to see who is on better form and who should be the long-term number one. Because you really can't go wrong with either option. But Mamash Davili probably has a higher ceiling. But put some respect on Kweep Keller's name because he's a cup winner. He's on that goalkeeper's wall at Liverpool alongside Adrian San Miguel, Super Cup final, saving with the legs. Oh, I love that. Tammy Abraham, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> yeah, I, I really, really appreciate all of the Liverpool goalkeepers because it's been a problem position for so long, right? When we had Ming the Merciless, Mignolet in goal, Pepe Reina on the decline, Jersey Dudek inconsistency, Loris Karius with an unfortunate concussion, smashing elbow by Ramos, double blow KO as well. Yeah. When you don't have that reliable keeper at the back, sometimes you shudder to think on crosses and, you know, shots on goal and long range shots and spillages and all that kind of thing. But we do have that man mountain at the back, that colossal titan, you know, the savior at the back. You can almost relax and watch the rest of the game knowing that if something does come through, you've got that final contingency plan. You beat a Van Dyke, you beat a Konate, which doesn't happen often. Alison Becker will save the day and pop off he goes to Salah and score a goal. Or if you need a last minute winner to get into the Champions League for that season, Bosh, on the head, right? In tribute to his dad. Much respect to the man. Anyway, I digress just a little bit. Just going back to sausage for a second. I saw Stefan Bacetic's calf. Wow, that's like the power cube. Shakiri's calf. I want me with some of that calf. So I, I'm going to put that protein to good use after the whey protein and creatine of a gym session. I did some hex deadlifts. Looky, looky. Gonna work on that beefcake. Alive a bird. Genie on the back. Let's go. That's time to reward myself with some sausage. <laughs> uh, still sounds so wrong. Don't know why it's only sausage. Anyway, no, before we do that, let's carry on this video. Congratulations, Virgil van Dyke in the team of the season for last year. Still top notch like this channel. The cream of the crop! Channel substance in abundance. We got sausage, mates. <laughs> and a hat with a flag on it. Official merch. But yes, the transfer rumours are heating up. Jared Brantwaith at Everton. £70 million. We are new favourites. What is going on there? Everton won't sell to Liverpool. They surely can't lose face in that regard. I mean, there's another player at Everton, formerly at Everton, Anthony Gordon now at Newcastle. Will Joe Gomez go to Newcastle? Apparently, they have a transfer list of three different centre-backs, which doesn't include Joe Gomez, but no smoke without a fire. They were willing to do that deal at the start of the season. Joe Gomez hasn't become a different player, so that's one to watch out for as well. Anthony Gordon would add something to the attack, just another versatile option, a homegrown option, if Joe Gomez does actually leave. But because Sepp Vandenberg's leaving, that does leave a slightly light at the back. So Joe Gomez, a very versatile, loyal serve, and he might even be around for testimonial if he stays this season, by the way, because it's coming up, what, how many seasons now? Is it seven or eight? But 10 seasons, get your testimonial. That'd be really nice to see. I think Joe Gomez is a super valuable member of the squad, but we have to do right by him because he's never complained, never down tools, always been reliable. He has been a centre-back pairing partner with Virgil van Dijk for a title-winning season, coming home after 30 years of hurt as well. I love me Joe Gomez. Joe Dini is absolute top of the pops. What a cheesy show back in the day. I think 
if if Gomez does end up going, the centre back we sign has to be of a higher calibre because Ibu Konate, hopefully under Arna Slot's fitness regime, has an injury free season. Jarrell Kwanza is still growing into his role, but is absolutely phenomenal for his stage of his career as well. Jared Brantwaite coming in could be the future pairing long term with Jarrell Kwanza for the England setup. But Mark A is very, very interesting. Now, Jared Brantwaite actually reminds me a little bit of a young John Stone. He's got a bit of everything about him, but except for he's got a cultured left foot, a left sided, left footed, mythical defender like a Levi Colwell. You almost would be willing to pay that premium for such a special quantity because everyone knows, everyone knows the kid is quality and he's going to have a good career, right? I was a little bit tentative and scared it was going to go to Man United, but it looks like they've pulled out of that one because of Larry Yoro, right? Lenny Yoro. So thank you for signing Lenny Yoro. And unfortunately to the kid for injuries, I don't wish injury on anyone. I want to beat people at their best is what it is. Injuries are part and parcel of the game. The other alternative is Mark Gay at Crystal Palace. But Newcastle having had, what, four, five bids rejected, 70 million, and they're wanting more, a world-class fee for this player. He is a phenomenal athlete at the back. He's almost like a Joe Gomez at the back. But they share the same weakness. That aerial ability is middling. It's not dominant. And it looks as though Arna Slot and Liverpool want a dominant centre-back. But he has English pedigree, right? He's played in the Premier League for a long, long time, season upon season. He performed fantastic for the Euros. He's a quality, quality player. I don't think he's injured much either. He really would add something. But with Anderson, Joachim Anderson leaving Crystal Palace agreed a fee with Fulham it doesn't appear that Gay will move it'd be so surprising but the player that I think Liverpool should target and he probably isn't attainable right now because of the fact they lost Michael Elise, um and Ebrej Eze is top notch as well he has his injury woes is Adam Wharton eventually for that sixth position it's probably going to be a more likely prospect let's see how Crystal Palace do in the league and they might be more open to it in January but you put the feelers in now for a potential move in the future that'd be a really good one to sign but between Mark Gay Joe Gomez and Gerard Bramthwaite who would you guys prefer to see in Liverpool colours. Would they come in knowing that they'd be in rotation with Kwanzaa and Kanate in particular? Amara Nalo is quality coming through as well. He's so young, he's like 17 years old, but he's going to be a very good prospect once he's well. I think he's left-footed. Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't Nalo left-footed? He looks like a high-caliber youngster coming through at just the right time as well to become that fifth choice and eventual you know, successor to one of the players in the back line. Van Dijk, Konate, Kwanzaa and Gomez for now is a good set of players with an emergency, Bacetic or Endo, who have both played centre-back a lot in earlier days in their career. So don't rule that out as well. Matip has gone. Gomez looks like he may go. Seth van der Berg will very likely go as well. A player's got to come in. Will be one of them. Will be Ignacio, who only plays in the three and isn't aerially dominant as well, although he's physically good and has a long pass. I don't see that. Will be Hincapié. Probably more of a left-back option. Wouldn't see that as well. He's left-sided Tomiyasu. Very interesting. It'd probably be a name that uh, is out of the blue, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be against signing one of the English lads just because of that homegrown quota will always bite you back in the backside if you don't keep an eye on it. And they are good. They're very good Premier Stand players and they would do no wrong in the Liverpool shirt as well. Smash a like on this video. Help this video get seen. Subscribe if you haven't already. Lots of content coming up. Thank you for the, the kind responses to my, my football tactics video. I will do the intermediate video coming soon. I think there's been enough interest in that and you guys have enjoyed it and liked it as well and commented very kind words. Join me again next time in the live stream. It's going to be a late one for me, but I'll try to do the best I can in that live stream. And I'm always innovating and trying to get quality entertainment, footytainment in front of you guys. This is a channel Substance Abundance. Smash the like. Miyazaki man, Ichiban means the best. I will be sending out the boxes of Japanese goodies very, very shortly to all of my YouTube members who are supporting me for the price of a mediocre cup of coffee every month. Cheap as chips. Come on, join. Support the membership. Why not? Chocolates, goodies, candies, merch, whatever. Sending it to your way throughout the season. FPL is underway as well. I'm what? In the top 10? Looking forward to it. Keep going. Admin Insta as well. I'll put family photos, Liverpool photos, exclusive social media style stuff, right? On, on the Twitter, on, on Instagram as well. Join the Discord. We chat and banter, trans Spurs and memes all day long. Good laugh. And Janet, have a great day. Means ciao. See you later. Hit my music. Liverpool fan in Japan.